Welcome back to Think Create Code. In our first week, we covered quite a lot. What programming languages look like, what programming looks like in processing, and the idea of the algorithm. And we saw how we can draw various shapes using functions provided in the processing language. In our second week, we introduced variables and saw how they could make our life much easier. We use variables to refer to and modify data in our programs in a way that is easy for us to use. Remember that variable names should be easy to remember and type, but also descriptive of the data that they refer to. In this week, we'll look at understanding and reproducing patterns. We'll focus on repetition. Repetition is a very powerful construct in coding. In our everyday lives, we may be easily frustrated and bored with repetitive tasks, and so we'll try to find faster and easier ways of completing them. As an example, we might use a dishwasher when we have a full load instead of washing each individual dish, or we might send one text message to multiple friends instead of retyping the same message multiple times. The same could be said for coding. It doesn't have to be boring or repetitive. Instead of rewriting the same code over and over again, we can find more efficient and clever ways of creating code. We do this by giving the computer instructions using as little code as necessary and reusing sequences of code, which can actually be a fun problem-solving challenge. Consider the robot in the drawing. In order to get on top of the first step, the robot has to jump, then walk forward to reach the end destination. In the next problem, we are provided with a, another more advanced problem. We can see that for the robot to arrive at the end point, it needs to move through a series of steps, such as jumping, moving forward, jumping, moving forward, and so on. We could keep adding instructions for these moves until it completes a solution. However, this would result in a very long sequence of instructions that repeat the same steps over and over again. This is not only repetitive for us as a coder, but also makes it difficult when we, or someone else, wants to read our code. Instead, we can see that the series of moves are a repetition of the same sequence of steps we completed previously. By identifying where the pattern begins and ends, we are able to simply tell the computer to repeat a particular sequence. In our case, this sequence is that the robot needs to jump, then move forward over and over again. On the image, how many times that the robot needs to do this sequence? Let's count. The first repeat sequence is this. Second is this. The third is this. If we were to plan our algorithm, we would write something like this. Repeat three times, jump, move forward. The ability to identify the pattern is referred to as pattern recognition. This skill of abstraction involves knowing when you can reuse and reapply the same sequence of code for similar purposes and to accomplish the similar tasks. In this unit, we will be exploring the application of these methods with you to create your code, and you will be learning about the use of for loops. In completing the tasks, you will be developing your skills in pattern recognition and abstraction while learning how to make your code more efficient and much more easier to read.